does charcoal interfere with digestion? Not up to now, any studies do we know does it interfere with digestion. We don't have anything to say that it does. Um, does, it, does it absorb your nutrients and take them out of your body? No, because charcoal and clay and zeolite and those earth products, they just absorb the, they absorb those things that are inorganic. In other words, they are, they're toxins, and that's all it does. It doesn't know to take good things out of your body. It only grabs on and latches on to those things that don't belong in your body. So one has a negative charge, and one has a positive charge. And so the negative charge is uh, um, the healthy things that are in your body. The positive charge, I know it sounds just the opposite, is it is those things that are toxic and so it latches right onto them. So when you take charcoal, you never take it close to um, uh, taking medications of any kind because guess what it's gonna do? It'll latch right onto it and take it right out of your body. So will clay, so will the zeolite. Um, so there is a way to take it and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Oh, I gotta keep watching this time. Okay, um, these are some of the things that it does. I, I have my husband doing this and I do it. I don't do it as regular as I should, but if you wanna whiten your teeth, charcoal is very good for whitening the teeth. Now it looks real black when you're doing it, but it makes it nice and white. In fact, I understand, and maybe Andre can verify this, they use charcoal to, to a type of charcoal, I think it's done out of the bones to make sugar nice and white. So, <laughs> but anyway, so it's real good for whitening. Um, charcoal is, is very good if you have, if you have a lot of bad scents or odors in, in a room or in the house or wherever. And you can get jars and put charcoal in it and pour, punch holes at the top and set them all behind the furnace, you'll absorb it all. In fact, you can put this in your refrigerator and it'll absorb all the, you know, smells that you have in the refrigerator and keep it smelling very nice and very fresh. It's very good that way. It's fabulous for pain, wonderful for liver detoxification. It's just excellent. I'll be able to tell you some of that. Wonderful for inflammation of just about any sort. It is a mini dialysis and we use that. We had two patients here back many years ago that had the shunts in getting ready to have dialysis and we used a lot of charcoal and a lot of charcoal bath and of course we had to feed them in a certain way because they have to have the lowest degree of protein in their body when we do this and both of them did not have to go on dialysis. You know. <laughs> And we're going to talk, hopefully tomorrow I can hit it on radioactive poisoning. Everybody should have charcoal because we don't know what's up ahead in, in this country. We don't know when a meltdown will happen here. And hopefully I can talk a little bit about some of these meltdowns. Intestinal gas is fab, you know, it's fabulous for that. Um, bad breath, I've had babies with Neil uh, jaundice and I would soak them in it and I would make them a slurry water which this is like a slurry water. I let the charcoal settle to the bottom, then I use a piece of cheesecloth or a paper towel, and I still pour it through, and then I put it in the bottom, feed it to newborn. You know, and all of them cleared up within, within a two to three day period, I had the babies all cleared up. Uh, uh, oh boy, snake and spider bites, it's phenomenal. Now, what I want to say about snake and spider bites is this. If you get bit by a snake, we do have an antidotes, you know, at the hospital that they can give you. However, they tell you you better take the, <laughs> kill the snake and bring it in there. They don't want to give it to you because they have certain, certain serums for certain types of snake bites, or if they give you the wrong one, that could kill you. But what I'm saying is, if you get bit by a poisonous snake, and hear me clear, I'm not telling you just to use charcoal and not go to the hospital, don't do that. But use the charcoal on the way to the hospital. Have a good compress made, put it on, drink a bunch of charcoal, and head for the hospital. The biggest thing in snake bites is you don't want to move around too fast, you don't want to make your heart beat real hard, and that's hard not to do when you get scared like that. You know, but, but do it that way. When I hike, because I've had a few serious close calls that I might have not been here today, that I, ha I don't go in the woods 
and hike in any deep situation where there's possible vipers of any kind. I make sure that I, I make myself a couple compresses and I make them nice and thick like this. And then I have a, like a, a smaller bottle than this or even this size and I put water in it and I put a dose of charcoal. You would not believe it. It's a wonder I can shake it up. But I'm able to shake it up. And then I, I have those compresses with me with a um, with an ace, small ace bandage, a little smaller than this. And I have that in, I have the, the compress in a plastic bag, and I make sure that I have that with me so that if, if I get bit accidentally, because you know, if you scare a snake, what's he gonna do? He's gonna jump, he's gonna coil and jump at you before you even knew what happened. And so you never know when you're in the woods and there's weeds, and which almost happened to me. And so it's better to be safe, and if you're you know, hiking with other people, you have an emergency kit if something like that were to happen, and so I highly suggest it. You make the conference. We're going to do it in a minute. Yeah, we're going to get there, hopefully. Oh, now, so now these little monkeys, I would... How do you use it on your eyes? On your eyes? Yeah. Yeah, if you, if, if you have an infection in the eye, an inflamed eye, well, I'm going to show you how to make the compress. You can put it right over the eye. You put it on the eyelid or not on the eye? No, no, I make a compress and put it over the whole eye. With your eye closed. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Um, I, I would love to have one of them for a pet every time I see it. I, from a little girl, I always wanted a monkey. and My uncle was a seaman, and I would say, Uncle Jim, would you please bring me a monkey the next time you go to Africa? And he would always try to bring me a monkey in, but back in those days, you just couldn't do it. But anyway, I just love these little guys. Well, in the southern part of Africa, apparently, there was, there was a whole colony of these um, red colobus monkeys, and they ate a certain type of tree to get all their nutrition. And apparently there was some huge flood, and you probably go on the internet and read about it. There was some huge flood that came into this area, and it washed what they didn't kill. It washed out these monkeys to a little island that was off that coast. And so they began to habitate on this little island, but they didn't have the nutrition that they needed for their bodies that they got from a certain tree that was in this part of Africa, the southern part. And so they begin to eat, I think it's the mango tree leaves, and it was very toxic and very poisonous to them. But it had a certain amount of nutrition that they needed to survive. Now look what these little guys did. They would eat the poisonous leaves. You see them up here in the tree. They would eat the poisonous leaves, and then they would go get themselves a chunk of charcoal. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? You know, now I don't know that they thought that through and they knew the story about F.P. Torrey that I know, but I believe that God even works among his creatures. He loved these little monkeys and he wanted to help them survive. So somehow he impressed in their minds, I mean that's the only thing I can come up with, and then they, then they went, you know, because they're in a remote area and there's all kinds of fires burning everywhere and they could get the charcoal. So they knew where the charcoal was and they didn't eat the leaves till they knew they could go get the charcoal. Isn't that amazing? I just think that is so great. Um, here's how to use charcoal. Uh, one tablespoon of charcoal e e equals four capsules or eight tablets. Now I only take capsules when I'm traveling because you never want to mix charcoal in a car or anything that's moving in an airplane or they're going to throw you off. So you want to take capsules because charcoal does, it just floats up and floats down on everybody. So you don't want to take that chance. So I, but if you buy it, I mean, this would probably make you maybe more than, fit, maybe a hundred bottles of, of uh, capsules, you know, you'd probably get out of this and you're only going to pay $13 for this and you'd pay 10 something, 10.99 for one little bottle like of these of capsules. So you see what I'm saying? You're, and not only that, I just like the fact that I put that in water and I can get it in my system, into my bloodstream quick and you can do that. So you just have to choose, but and it doesn't really taste bad. If it if it tastes a little chalky, maybe a little bit or whatever, 
you know, suck it through a straw and you won't even notice it. When you have children, and I encourage you to do this with little ones, and I've had mommies that did this and it always worked, is that they wanted to turn their children to more natural things. And, you know, kids would just go, ooh, you know, and they don't want to fool with that. You just put it in grape juice. And, and if they're sick or have a tummy ache or anything like that, that you want them to have charcoal, then you put it in grape juice and they don't know the difference. And, you know, if you have some adults that they're like, ooh, I'm not going to take that stuff. Put it in grape juice and offer them a glass of grape juice. They won't know the difference. You know, that's the nice thing about it. Uh, food inter <clears throat> inter interferes with the absorption rate about 50%. Now, that's only if you... if. If you are going to get gassy from cabbage or beans or certain things, but you want to eat them, don't worry about that. You're only going to get 50% because you're not taking it for that reason. So you can take some charcoal before you eat your meal, and you can take some charcoal again after you eat some meal, and what it'll do is it help absorb that gas that it will make. And, and, and so it's not you're not doing it for any other reason. So it doesn't matter if you only get 50% absorption because you're not trying to do anything but absorb the gas that is in your stomach. Uh, when taking medications, this is the most important thing, write it down if you don't have it there. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you, I have a whole, all these slides that you see that I'm doing here, I have it in your notebook. Uh, it's on page 33. You have to go. You have to go to the hydro section, which is blue, and then uh, after that, for those that um, I may as well tell you this real quick. For those that are wanting to teach and may want my uh, powerpoints. Uh, I have all the hydro treatments on PowerPoint, and I have all the natural remedy treatments on PowerPoint, and I have a lot of handouts, and so I'm, I'm downloading them on a jump drive, and I'll sell them to you so that you can have them already done, which is a nice thing. Um, where am I at? What happened? Huh. So it shrunk on me. I don't know how to unshrink it. Um, so anyway, we're back to medication. Any kind of medication that you take, it's got to be two hours on either side of it. So, you know, if you have to take medication at 10 in the morning, then at 8 o'clock would be when you could take charcoal. And you can't take charcoal again until after 12 o'clock. Do you follow that? Yes. You have to do that. If not, it will latch onto it and take it out of your body. So that's one of the most important. Oh, yeah, here's the computer man. He, he knows how to do that. Isn't that something? I, that's where I got left behind the door when they gave out skills with computers and any kind of technology. <laughs> okay, now, now here we go. Triglycerides and cholesterol, yes, it will decrease it incredibly. If you follow this program, and it's in your book, it's already written down for you, this, this slide's in your book. Um, but you can't do this treatment for your cholesterol and triglycerides if you're going to still shove in the fat and the, and the cupcakes and everything else. Do you follow what I mean? You, you need to be following a really good vegan, vegan diet. And cut out the fats completely, except, you know, your nuts and seeds, that's one thing. When you're trying to reduce this down, and you will see a substantial reduction if you take this and you eat the way that I'm suggesting. Um, did I get the next one up there? Okay. Um, now, I, I, it's like I told you a little while ago, I would rather err doing too much than not enough when I'm dealing with poison. And I've had a couple of incidents in my life dealing with, you know, could have been life and death. And so I, I don't change them every half hour. When they first been bit and, and, and they're serious and there's no hospital situation, no, nowhere you can get help, then I change the compress every 10 to 15 minutes. While they're still conscious, I get charcoal in them. When they go unconscious on you, then you don't give anything by mouth because it could, they could aspirate, go down the wrong way, and then you could kill them that way. So, you know, you don't want to do that. Um, and again, take two uh, tablespoons in water every two hours for th at least three doses. Well, my tablespoon is not your level tablespoon. Mine's a heaping one. Okay, because I just, like I said, I'd rather give too much than not enough. And uh, 
our, our radiation, you know, we may have to deal with this one day. So far, our country has been spared it, but the harmful effects of radiation are very serious, and I can't really go into all that. Hopefully, tomorrow, I'll be able to hit some highlights on radiation because we have a lot of it in the cell phones and in the computers and in our other phones and things that are in the house, and I'll show you how you can protect some of that. Um, uh, the the radio and thyroid cancer is when there is a um, uh, a radioactive meltdown. That's the biggest danger is thyroid cancer. I worked in the Ukraine. I worked in Romania, and I was there for, after Chernobyl went, and I saw lots of thyroid conditions and lymphomas and leukemia. A, a lot of that happening. And if you, and I can tell you this, and for women especially, start taking iodine because iodine is a big protector against uh, radioactive fallout. In fact, our government, if you live near um, a reactor, they will give you free iodine to be taken every day. And I learned that because somebody in my class looked it up on the, their cell phone and they said, hey, did you know this is happening? And then I talked to somebody that they get it free if they want it. They have to ask for it, but they get it free. And so they know that because when a meltdown happens, it puts iodine isotopes into the air. Most people do not have the right amount of iodine in their thyroid. That's why we have a lot of thyroid problems for that very reason. So what happens to your thyroid gland is it latches onto those isotopes, which are cancer causing. And it latches on and it fills up the thyroid gland. If you are taking iodine, your thyroid gland will be substantially filled up. If there's a fallout, you're not going to get affected by it. And for women, go on the internet and you look this up. I want you to, you know, don't listen to everything I'm saying. Go search it out for yourself so you're convinced of it. Very protective against breast cancer. Very protective. There's even books written about iodine and breast cancer. So you want to look that up for yourself. Um, okay, what have I got here? Okay, hopefully I can get to some of this, but I got to move on to. Um, let me see here. Oop. I'm going to mix this for you right now. But I want to get the other one up. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make this. Um, I get a little bowl like this. Now, they say it's best to not use metal. And I haven't really looked this up to be able to clarify it, but I've been told it enough times that metal can... Um, yeah, it can, yeah. So what I do is, you know, like I told you, I, here, here I got this much, you know, and you got to be careful. I look at, let's say, is it a cut, or do you want it for your knee, or your elbow, or across your stomach? I look at whatever it is I'm going to mix, and then I kind of judge how much charcoal I'm going to need. That's what I do. I don't do this measurement thing, you know. And I also make it nice and thick. Now, what you want to do when you mix charcoal, if you just do charcoal by itself, it's, it dries and gets very hard and very flaky. And then you'll be really upset with me if you do that because if you go to bed with the charcoal poultice, it's bound to escape and get on your sheets. And then it's going to be a nightmare getting it out. But you can get it out with um, peroxide and salt. But anyway, what you want to do is you want to make it nice and gelatinous and nice and soft and so that it stays soft and stays moist, especially if you put it on an area that's very painful, you know, and, and maybe you got an abscess, a bad infection, a bad cut. Well, you don't want anything hard on that. You want it to be soft and you can mold it around it. So you just take some ground flaxseed like this. I just put, you know, a certain amount in there. Again, I don't really measure. I just kind of figure. Now, when you, when you do this, I kind of mix it together. And then I try to leave like a little hole in the middle. And then this is the next big thing. Don't pour fast or you will regret it. You just pour real, real slow. Just a little bit. 
And then you come in here and don't do this. If you do, you'll regret that one too. You just start turning it around a little bit at a time like this, stirring it in. <coughs> And it takes a while to stir it in, you know, a few minutes. It doesn't stir in that fast. So when it starts to clump a little bit, well, I know I don't have enough water. So now I'm going to put just a little bit more water. And you know what's nice about when you do these compresses is that, you know, if it gets too soupy, just put in a little more charcoal, you know. If it, if it gets too like it just did then, to tight, then stick a little bit more water in it. And so you can keep doing it until you, um, until you get it just right. If I had time, I'd tell you my story on pumpkin pies that I ended up with 19 because I did that. <laughs> and um, is that's a story and a half. I was young, it was first Thanksgiving married, and I was going to make pumpkin pies. And I thought that the pumpkin was like you buying a can was inside of a pumpkin. And so I sent my husband to the farmer to get it. Now, you know, this goes back over 50 years ago. And when I cut it off and I looked inside, I thought, this isn't a pump. It's got nothing but seeds in it. So I made him take it back to the farmer. And when he came home, he, was, he said, you have embarrassed me. That's the pumpkin in there. Well, anyway, I started cooking it and doing everything. And, and it got too soupy. And then it got too thick. And I kept adding and adding. I had 19 pumpkin pies. And the rest of it I threw away. So, so I had my experience overdoing it. So here, here's just a little bit. I could tell a little more of that story, but we don't have time. So my husband uh, says to me when he sees me, and I've had a few other one time with with um, making oat burgers. I wouldn't want to tell you how many that turned out. And, <laughs> and um, so anyway, here you go. You're going to see this. See how nice and gelatinous that is? That's so nice and soft. And guess what? It'll stay that way. See? Just like that. So um, where did I go? OK. Here, here is chucks. Now look, if you're going to ever think you're going to do this, get these. This is the best. Back in our olden days, you know, we had paper towels, which by the way, you don't have to have anything fancy because you get into some remote areas like I have, you just use whatever you've got. Go ahead. Would that mixture work for a person who have arthritis, do you think? Oh, it's good for pain, but I'm going to show you something tomorrow that's really good oh. as well. It's very good for any kind of pain. It really is. But I'm, and, I, and sometimes you might use a combination. You can take that charcoal if you want and just put it straight on a pimple or something like that. And you can use a Band-Aid. You know, you can use a gauze. You can take it, which I've done it many a time. I didn't have it. Put it between two paper towels. But it's really nice with the chuck, and I'm going to show you why. You can pull that piece, then you can cover it up. Now, I have these chucks here for sale because for a, a while I was telling everybody, look, you can go to the drugstore or Walmart and you can get these chucks. Then somehow the manufacturer changed them, and so when you would go buy them, you would pull it back and it'd be all this cotton, and you can't spread nothing on it. So I thought, oh my dear, I, I bet you many people were upset with me when they went and bought them. So what I've done is I just bought a big case and I just have them. Uh, because if you buy one of those, I just sell them for a dollar just so that you can have them because you, you may not, and they're this big, you know. So you can make a lot of compresses out of that. And so it's a good thing, it's a good thing to have. Now I haven't checked recently. Maybe they started making them better again. I don't know, but for a number of years, we couldn't. If you were stuck and didn't have this, I had a lady in the audience that said nursing pads will work. You can pull the thin piece back because that's what's important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off because I cut it, you know, in a square. And so you can see I'm going to take this and put it right over into this, like this. Now what I'm going to do is just spread it. See how I'm spreading it? You know, and I, I, I'm one that makes them nice and thick, especially if I'm dealing with a poisonous bite like spider bites and, you, you know, brown recluse, black widows. You know, they can be serious and they can die from it. And I had a close call with a little five-year-old once. So then you put this over top of it like this, and then 
this is what you do, is you take masking tape. Now I have a clever way that I do this because in the beginning we didn't know that. We used to use just our medical tape and that can be quite expensive. So don't do that. Just get yourself masking tape and then learn how to put it on. It took us a while to figure it out, but one day I, the Lord gave me the idea. I put it on like this to start with, right on the top. See how that is? But then the clever part is you go all the way over and you don't see the masking tape at all. That way, when we first put it on and we just went down the sides, that old masking tape rubs against your skin and, and irritates it. But when you flip it over just like you saw me do, then you don't have that to worry with. Um, and so, you know, a little roll of masking tape goes a long way in making compresses. And I'll pass this around so you can take a, a good look at it. Now the other thing that you can do with these compresses, let's say you've got a really pain situation going on, a bad infection, see how nice that is? And see, all the masking tape is right on the back. So if you wanna pass that around just to take a good look at it, does anybody wanna look at it or are you okay with it? Okay, you can just. Um, the thing that you can do, let's say you had a bad infection or, and, 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 and again, you only use this to draw out. If you, if you have cut yourself and you don't have an infection, then there's no need to use charcoal. You want to use aloe or comfrey or something like that to create a healing. But when you have a bad infection, you want to draw that infection out. So you can either use clay or you can use charcoal and you draw the infection out. And as you see that it's healing, then you can go ahead and do comfrey or plantain or or which are my two favorite, or aloe, which is another one we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, because it doesn't deposit anything, it just draws out. Um, which, now I was going to tell you something, what was it? Do what? Oh, this is flaxseed. You ground flaxseed. Now I've had people tell me, I use... Um, Oh, psyllium is good. That's the only other one I know that's really good is psyllium. Uh, you can use, um, ch chia seed will work as well. But some people told me cornstarch, oatmeal, I've tried it. It didn't work. In, for my, in my opinion, it didn't work as nice as the flaxseed works. You know, because it makes it just like you saw it, nice, soft, and gelatinous. What was the material you have against your skin? You have a These chucks. What? You mean these? Yeah, yeah you, you, you have uh, masking tape, you have the tape. Uh, well, the masking tape doesn't go against yeah, the skin, I yeah. Have, uh, what do you call that? Just Chuck. Yeah, you pull the, you pull the uh, material back, the top layer, and then you can spread it, you know. And if you can find them uh, in the store, I, I mean, I should go check again, but one day I spent over $40 buying a bag at this drugstore and a bag over at this other drugstore, and I thought, boy, after I had about three bags of them, I said, and none of them were any good, so I just, I didn't check anymore. Okay. Um, the slurry water, you just put a teaspoon, you know, Oh, go ahead. Would you put charcoal over an open wound? An open wound? Yes, like this paste that you make. If it's not infected. I mean, if it's infected. You know, you can clean, you, you know, when it's open and has a cut, uh, there is the fear that it could tattoo. Now, I've had somebody tell me it tattooed them. I've done it, and it's never tattooed me. Because I don't, I leave it on just a, 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 lo a long enough time that when I take the old one off, I clean it. And so what I mean by tattooing, if the cut is open and deep enough, then the charcoal could slip under the skin and create a tattoo mark. And there might be some people that have done it. 
I have certainly done it enough on myself, and I have not had that problem, but I've had some people that have. So you want to be more careful, you know, that you don't put it on an open cut. Usually when a cut has just been opened, you want to use like peroxide or something to clean it out really good, and, and then you want to do something to cause that cut to start healing. And that's when you would go to aloe or plantain. Does anybody know what plantain is? Yeah. Uh, I tell you that that is as good almost as comfrey. Comfrey is, you know, the other Cadillac. But both of those will work wonders for anything you could imagine, you know, and especially in cuts and sores and sunburns and 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 pain and just any number of things, abscesses. They're just and you just get it out in your yard. Anywhere you go in the world grows plantain. Yeah. I, I think we should distinguish between the two plantains. There's one that looks Yeah, there's like one that looks like a banana. And, the other. and we're going to talk about that tomorrow because you can uh, use the banana peel for, for planter's warts, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, this is the plant, which I'll show you. I'll show you. Just remind me, and I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. But what I wanted to get into right now, like I said, because we ran late, well, I only have a few minutes. Um, here's clay. Well, you know what clay is. Whoops. What, oh, I know what I have to do. Here we go. This is the amazing thing about clay. I, 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 I love clay, but I've been a charcoal user for years, and I've done some very serious situations with charcoal, so I'll always lean for that if I'm in a really life-and-death crisis type of thing. Is that in the book? Yes, it's in there. Um, I, oh, I'll tell you what page it's on. It's going towards the back, and it will be on another page, 56. All my slides that you see here are in there. So you don't have to copy any notes off of this unless you don't have the book. It's all there. Um, what's kind of nice, you know, clay's just dirt, bottom line. You know, it is. But you know what? Clay comes in all these colors. You know, it comes in blue and green and red and yellow and gray. In fact, I have some of the colors over here. And, and each one is different for different skin types or digestive problems. Boy, the one for digestive problems is just excellent. And so what's neat about this, and I want you to think about this. I hope I can get through this fast enough. Here's Genesis 2, 7. What's it say? God made what? Adam, you know, from the dirt, you know. And so for that reason, oh dear, what did I do with my, what did I do with my clicker? Oh, here. For that reason, when clay is placed inside of the body, let's say you drink it into the body, it knows exactly where to go to correct and the only thing that, you know, we say clay has an intelligence. Well, the only reason that I can, you know, I have to, and again, my imagination has to go with that, is because we were made out of clay. So you put clay with clay, you could say, so it knows what to do. And that's the only thing I can come up with, you know. It knows how to fix the problem. It acts with wisdom, Clay does. In fact, I had Andre get me when he was in Russia because black clay is considered the, one of the most superior clays. But all clays work. If you, We used to do, many, many years ago, we had old tub in the back of Ann Wody, where our other lifestyle center, and we put old red clay in it. You know, and we put our patients down in the red clay. You can make clay wraps, and you can do all kinds of things with clay. Um, clay is, is, is a living beneficial substance that provides, and this is amazing, vital energy for the human body. Why? Because clay is loaded with the things that we're deficient in, and that's minerals. Clay is loaded with minerals. And, the, and what's happening in our, our society, especially here in the United States, we have a lot of deficient soil. But you go in these big canyons where they dig for these kind of clays, they are, they have a lot of nutrition deep down under the earth, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute. You know, clay has a unique power, just like charcoal, to do what? To, to attract impurities of any kind that are in the body and on the body, you know? 
because clay is electronegative, the same thing the charcoal is, and the impurities and toxins are electropositive. So it's not, well, will it do it, or maybe will it do it? It's not that at all. It will do it, because nothing can, can, ha can hang in the body when you have an electronegative that pulls impurities. If the impurities are there, it naturally latches onto it. It's not if or maybe, it does it, period. Go ahead. Can you get pure clay from the soil? You can buy it in some stores, or you go, go on the in, you go on the internet. I'll tell you a few good ones that that I do have the French one here, but um, I don't have some of the this. Th there is a bentonite clay that is very good. Um, Montemorlite bentonite Montemorlite clay is one of the best ones. But here here's some of the things that it's good for. You know, it, it, anti-inflammatory, food allergies, promotes wound healing, excellent for detox detox. De See, I'm going too fast. Detoxify the liver. Excellent for infections. E external uses, here it goes. Just like, just like charcoal, just about. You know, it's wonderful for periodontal disease. Uh, you brush your teeth with this and guarantee it's going to heal your gums. You don't have to go to a periodontist and pay $1,000, $1,500, but you might, if it's too far advanced, you might have to have it scraped out. But if you do, you just brush with this, or you can put um, oregano oil on toothbrush and brush with it, and it will, clean, it will clean your gums, and you will never have gum disease again. How do I know that? Because my husband did it, and it's worked for him for years and years and years now. Um, teeth abscesses, I don't know how many people I've told, just take a little bit of clay, mix it up in water, and just stick it in wherever that abscess is. And it takes the pain almost out in a very short time, and it starts pulling the infection out. Would you use the and the oil and the oregano, or either or? Either or. You could use or do a combination. My husband's now brushing his teeth with clay, you know. Um, but he, for, and he still goes back and uses the oregano oil also. So he kind of alternates. And you know, it's kind of a good thing to alternate, you know, because you, when you're doing some natural things, sometimes after a while, you just sort of hit a plateau. So then you do something different you use for the same problem, and then your body just picks up and goes again. So it's not a bad thing to do that. Um, inflamed organs. Oh, I could tell you some stories on that. Liver, kidneys, doing clay poultices over it is just phenomenal. Um, here's, here's the French clay. Now, it's a type of mineral clay, highly absorbent, and I, I have it here for those that um, want to get the really good kind. It has full of trace minerals, beneficial in removing impurities, toning the skin. In fact, French green clay, world over, is used in spas. That's all they use, is the French green clay, because it's so phenomenal for all, they do all the body wraps, all the facials, you know, they use it for all these things that you see here and detoxifying the body, because it's a wonderful, wonderful clay. Um, now, let me tell you about French green clay. Now, I don't know if all of them come out of the same type of quarry, but from, well, I know mine does, but, um, <clears throat> They mine very deep to get the French green clay in France. Now, there's some supposed to be in Bulgaria I sent for that, and that was no more French green clay. It looked like they just sent me a pile of dirt. But, you know, it still might have been good, but it sure wasn't French green clay. Now, I ask myself, you know, if you go to a big canyon or whatever, if you ever look at it, you'll notice you know, this color and then this color of dirt. Have you ever noticed that? Well, those are all the various clays. When they mine for French green clay, it's very deep that they mine in the earth. Now, they say that French green clay is from, from decayed vegetation, and that's why it's green. Well, now, I, I got thinking about that. I thought, well, what in the world could have decayed that deep in the earth? Well, you know what it is? Think about it. From the flood. And so that's where, now you realize, you realize what was in the leaves and the vegetation before the flood? 
I mean, people lived to a thousand years old pretty near back then. So you can imagine what the French green clay, if they're mining it in those kind of mines deep in the earth, that's the only way if it's, if it's coming from vegetation that has been, you know, in the, in, the, in the dirt, has been mined that way, it can't be anything else. Nothing growing down there that deep. So anyway, that again is, nobody's told me that, that uh, except they told me that, you know, it's from, from plant, decayed plant matter. Um, that's the only thing I could come up with. Can you, can, could you think anything else? I'm sure not, you know. So again, the same thing, do not take medication. Now you have to be a little careful with this and charcoal. Some people have a tendency to have some real uh, issues with constipation. And uh, charcoal can, it's not rare, you know, I mean, it is rare. Most people do very fine with charcoal, but then there are some that they'll get constipated. So I always want to make sure you're drinking lots of water. Anytime you take anything into your body for detoxing, for pulling poisons, for doing that kind of thing, you must drink lots of water. If you don't, your body cannot cleanse. It can't, it has a difficult time cleansing it out. And you know what? If you don't drink enough water, you can feel worse than feeling better. Because the poisons are trying to come out, but you don't have enough money in, um, money. <laughs> enough, enough water in there, it working through the kidneys and the liver because your detoxification areas in your body are your lungs, your liver, and your kidneys. If you don't have enough well, I almost said it again. <laughs> Water flowing through there so it helps it detox and get out of your body, you're going to feel worse and you could get even more constipated. Clay, on the other hand, it can sometimes constipate you. So I'll tell you this and then I know you've got to go to lunch, but because you came so late, maybe we can do five more minutes. I don't know. Because I wanted to show you something. Oh, where did Jody go? Did she leave me? I want to show you something for the aloe. Um, um, where was I at? Um, oh, this is how you start taking clay. Let's say you pour water in this, this, um, oh dear. Yeah, I thought I had another little spoon here, but wherever it's at. Now this I don't do the same as I do when I'm taking it internally that I do with, clay, with charcoal. You know, I said, just heap it up. Well, don't do that with clay because it's pretty, it's pretty potent on the other hand. And because you're, you're trying to um, see how your body can adjust if your body does well with it. So clay is real potent for pulling toxins. So you want to go slow when you start taking it. So you just dump it on the water like that. See it? It's going right on down. Do you see that? Yeah. And so what I suggest for everybody to do is do that at night. Before you go to bed, put that in your water, let it settle down, and just drink the slurry water. Do that for about a week. Here, here's what it looks like. Do that for about a week. It'll clear up more by morning. Do that for about a week, and if you're doing really good with it, then you can put the same amount in for the next week, let it sit overnight, and if you want, you can stir it up a little bit in the morning and then drink half of it in the morning and drink the other half later in the day. You know, this is the French. Yeah, yeah, this is the French. I only use two, well, I shouldn't say I only use two clays because I have a number of clays for different types of skin and then one for intestinal problems. Do you Go ahead. have a sale as well? French green. French green. Yeah, I have French green here for sale. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that you were asking. Go ahead. Um, what is the same amount of two different places at one time? Yeah, there's something about clay. It may be charcoal the same way, but I've never heard this. Clay is, you know, acts with wisdom. It doesn't like to be working over here and working over here. So when you start a treatment with clay, you don't do it one day, skip a day, and then do another day. You, when you settle in to work on a specific problem that you have, whether it be pain, infection, whatever it may be, then you stick with it till it, till it corrects. Because then clay just puts all its energies into this area. If you start putting clay on your tummy and then up here on your shoulder, then it starts not knowing where it's supposed to settle in and do the, the real healing. So it'll flip back and forth from what I understand. Go ahead. Forgive me if I've missed it, but why would I drink the clay? 
Right. Well, because a lot of people want to do it for minerals, because you get all the trace minerals in clay. And so it's a real cheap mineral supplement, you could say. As long as your body can handle it, then do it. If you find some constipation, as long as you're drinking a lot of water, as long as you're taking fiber, and I would highly suggest, you know, put flaxseed, put chia seed on your cereal or in your foods in the morning so you get a lot of gelatinous, and you will eventually be able to handle it. Most of the time when constipation is settling in and there's a problem there is because there's been a problem for a long time and you don't have the peristalsis action in the colon to move it on. And so what happens is, is that you don't drink enough water and you have to have a certain amount of water in your system and in your intestinal tract to be able to um, digest your foods and pull pull the nutrients out of your food into the bloodstream but when you don't drink enough water it pulls it out but then what's left is just dry constipation stools because you haven't drank enough water you know that's one of the biggest biggest reasons and you don't exercise because when you exercise and you walk your legs are going up and down and so you ha and you're breathing. So here's your lungs and here's your legs. Here's the, your intestinal tract. And so you have this action by exercising. Do you see what's happening? It exercises your whole intestinal tract, your stomach, all your organs get a good exercise when you walk and you breathe. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And so that's one of the other reasons why you need to walk, you know, doing that kind of exercise. Because if you're drinking water and you're walking, you're exercising not just your muscles, but your entire um, um, abdominal uh, cavity with all the organs that are in there. Your pancreas gets it, your liver gets it, your intestines get it. I mean, it's amazing. And people wonder when they sit all day long, they know now when you sit all the time, you're more likely for Alzheimer's. You need to, if you're a computer sitter, and we're going to try to talk about some of this tomorrow, it, you need to get up every hour, and you need to walk around, go outside and walk for five minutes to get your circulation going. Most people have all these neck problems, all these shoulder problems, because you know you're like this. You know, and you're not moving your body. And so the circulation, okay, I'm going to get you. The circulation slows down. Your muscles become hard as rocks because you're not exercising. So I tell people, roll your shoulders this way and roll them that way and turn your head this way and turn, and then get up and walk, you know, around the office if you can't go outside. Well, anyway, we're going, I'm, we're on to something else. They're, they're, you're going to get the eight laws of health. <laughs> I can easily get off quick. Um, let me see. I think I hit the highlights. You mix it. Uh, okay, I have most of that up there, and it's in your... Oh, if you have very high blood pressure, then be careful with... with um, with clay, take the slurry water, see how your blood pressure does, which by the way, I'll throw this in here, you want to be taking magnesium. Everybody should be taking magnesium. In fact, if you want to absorb your vitamin D3 real good, then take magnesium. That helps you absorb it into the system. But magnesium plays a big role in keeping your blood pressure down, keeping your heart working good. We are the most deficient in magnesium in this country. It's, it's almost non-existent in the soil. Well, you, you just get, get a, buy a, a magnesium um, Supplement. supplement, yeah, with minerals. Just the magnesium, or magnesium you may, well, you know, you can get magnesium, potassium, and calcium. You know, it'll come that way. I use magnesium, especially at night. Like, you know, when I get through this seminar tonight, um, I can be really rung up, <laughs> as you can see. And so what it does for me when I had a really hard day and pushing hard, I take that magnesium, and you can feel your body just relaxing. Uh, it, it, most magnesiums, well, there's three different kinds, but the primary one is Epsom salts. That's magnesium citrate. If you soak in a bath, hopefully I can go through some of that tomorrow in magnesium uh, you know, citrate, and I'll tell you how you have to mix it. Let me tell you, your body will just relax. You'll have the best night's sleep you ever had. 
you know, besides taking it internally, it is absolutely wonderful. Mag magnesium citrate, which is nothing but Epsom salts, I mean, it's wonderful for cleaning infections. It's wonderful for all kinds of things. People wouldn't think that, but it's excellent. In fact, so is uh, ep um, baking soda. You're going to learn that doing the lemon wrap. Um, go ahead. What's the difference between magnesium citrate and magnesium sulfate? What, what, which one do you use? Well, it's just two types of magnesium. I primarily use the citrate, but you can buy a magnesium that has all of the magnesiums. I think it's three different ones that you can buy. But when, I, when I'm in an emergency, like I had a really bad emergency one night in Romania in the Lifestyle Center. The blood pressure, I couldn't even register it. It was so bad. And so um, I figured that she was going to stroke on me. I mean, I didn't see any other way out. And so I, <laughs> I gave her a glass to drink of tablespoon heat. Now, let me tell you what, if you do that, don't stay as close to the toilet as you can, because that's the other thing that magnesium citrate does. You want to clean out good? Go ahead and take it, because I'm telling you, it's going to clean you really, really good. But, but, but guess what? You put their feet in hot water, and if you get some foamies to put on their arms, her blood pressure came down. It came down within a safe zone. Just by giving her, you know why? Because magnesium citrate dilates the blood vessels and allows the blood, because her feet's in hot water and her arms, it just pulls the blood away from the brain, you know? And so, I, I mean, her life was saved as a result, and I know you're the one I... Can we mix charcoal and clay together No, I don't think so, um, because charcoal does one thing only, and that's absorb poisons and toxins. Clay is doing two things. It's, it's delivering trace minerals into your body and at the same time taking out the poisons. I would, on my way of thinking, I haven't read this, but on my way of thinking is that they're going to, it's going to somehow compete or mix it up, especially clay, because clay works with wisdom and it could confuse the clay in what it's supposed to do. That's my... No, it will not pull minerals out of your body. Only the inorganic minerals. Clay will not pull only the inorganic minerals, the ones that don't belong there, it will pull out. But not the good healthy minerals, no, because it deposits. Um, how long can you be on clay? Is there a length of time? No, but you know what I say for a lot of these things that we do? Do it for three to six weeks and take a week break. You know, it's always good, whatever you're doing, do it for a time and then take a little break. And then you can switch your program when you're dealing with other kinds of illnesses. But with clay and charcoal, I mean, you can just take it forever. But I always say, take a break or do what I do with a lot of the people I work with. I tell them, take it five days a week and don't take it two. You know, unless I'm dealing with a real serious situation that I, they got to be taking it. But if you're just taking it for medicinal purposes, you know, for minerals, we'll do it five days a week and have off on the weekend. Okay, so I just want to just uh, just be clear. So if you're, if you're on a course uh, with the uh, charcoal and you're taking that for whatever reason or reasons, just do that. And when you're done with that, introduce... Then you can do, then you can do clay, yeah. Charcoal will not take out any good minerals or vitamins in your body. The tests have not shown it. We even did some here at UG years back. Nothing shows that it's taken your vitamins out or your minerals out of your body. But if they're inorganic, it'll take them out. It'll latch right onto them and take them out. What about magnesium? Are you taking supplements with that? Bleach? Well, that, that, that's Epsom salts. That's magnesium but citrate. Bleach, other... N no. 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 Now, you could take magnesium citrate. I mean, you can take Epsom salts, but I'm here to tell you uh, that that patient I had, I mean, she almost spit it all out on me, but I kept making her drink a little bit more. I said, if you want to live, you better drink this, and we got to hurry, you know, so she, she did. Um, uh, it's bitter as gall. I'm telling you, to, mm, it's so bitter. I, I, mostly everything I teach, I've done so that I can tell people how, how it is. But it is bitter as gall. But in an emergency, if I had somebody that I suspected was going to stroke on me, that's the first thing I would do. I'd put their feet immediately in hot water. I'd put hot towels on their arms, and I'd give them the biggest dose of magnesium citrate is the one you want because that's the one that dilates the blood vessels. Will interfere with medication? No, no, uh-uh. No.
Could you put Epsom salt in the hot water as well? Oh yeah, you can put it in there if you want. All I care about, the only reason for the hot water when I'm dealing with the stroke possible situation, or let's say your blood pressure just kicks up a little too high. That's what you want to do. You want to get those feet in hot water and take a good dose of Epsom salts, but, but get, get the pills because you can get it down a lot easier. And just take the magnesium, soak your feet in hot water, and you'll see your blood pressure start to come down.